How's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be episode three of Cars and Stuff. First off, I'd like to say it's good to be back. Uh, I know I've been extremely busy. I've had a career change, uh, lots of things going on, but I'm settled into my new job now, and I think everything's going to level out quite a bit. Uh, my days of working, 20-hour days, are pretty much over. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dedicate some more time to this wonderful stuff that we all love right here. So I'm very happy to be back and uh, I appreciate everybody who's been patient and has checked on me and everything else. All is good and uh, everybody's safe over here. Everything's good over here and I appreciate all the uh, outreaches. Everything's fine and uh, we're ready to get back into this and see where we go from here. Okay, today's episode, what we're gonna talk about is my process of what I like to do when I get a new car. Now this is the fourth one in a batch of four that I just re recently purchased and the other three that I've done with this method uh, have worked out very, very well and uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the result. Uh, one thing to be noted, I'm always been, I've always been a firm believer that the worst a car will ever run, that goes for any slot car, the worst the car, any car will ever run assuming all the parts have not worn out, uh, that they're all in good working order, the worst it's gonna run is straight out of the box. There's a lot of reasons for that. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take this brand new car and we're going to um, basically accelerate the wear in process and get everything tweaked and set up. And uh, the difference in performance between a car that's gone through this process in a car that has not gone through this process is enough to where we're actually thinking about creating a uh, new class called Open Box, which is the car is just as it comes out of the box and put straight on the track and no uh, tweaking or anything else like that is done. And we'll leave the box dock class for cars that have gone through a process of break-in and uh, tweaking and uh, leave that in the box stock class and uh, keep another class for those who just buy a car and want to come over to the track and run it. So that's all good. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me tell you what we've done already first. The first thing I've done is I've taken the car out of the box. I've looked it over, make sure everything was good. And I put it on the track and uh, I set it up as a controller car at a very slow speed and I let it run about half a lap. I drive it about half a lap. Then I'll stop, turn the lights off, turn the lights back on and bring it back to the uh, um, start finish line again. I then set it up as a ghost car again at a slow speed and I'll let the car do uh, a lap, one or two laps as a ghost car, making sure it changes lanes properly. Then I go through and I set it up as a pace car I let it take a lap, make sure it bypasses the uh, entrance to the uh, pit lane. Then I go ahead and I recall it, make sure it returns and everything functions properly. Once I do that, I know the car works. And because uh, at that point, if there's an issue with the car, I can always turn it back in for warranty work. Uh, right now, uh, I know this car works and uh, does everything it's supposed to do. And there's nothing strange going on with it. so. It's a good candidate to go through and to get it set up and uh, broken in and tweaked in through the little process I like to do here. And it's not a quick process. So it's gonna take, uh, it takes a fair amount of time to do this, but the results are well worth it. Okay, so now that we got the backstory here, we know what we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start uh, getting the car out of the box and I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing into it and we'll go from there. So, of course, I'm gonna get the car out of the box, like always. Which, actually, I love to keep the cars in the jewel case. I think uh, the jewel cases are great. They make a great display, and everything uh, does what it's supposed to do, and it keeps them pretty well protected. So I'm a big fan of the Carrera jewel cases. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead, and this is the first time the body's been off the car. And uh, like I said, I only ran a few laps with it at a slow speed. And the reason why you want to do a slow speed is I don't do it to protect the motor 
or anything else like that because it's really not protecting much as far as the motor goes. But we tend to know that new cars can be unpredictable from time to time. And I want to make sure that uh, I don't have any issues driving the car. So uh, I know that uh, I'm not going to damage the car itself and everything's going to be okay when I get ready to do this uh, tear down here and see what we have. I'm going to get the jewel case out of the way. I'll put this in here because I'm not going to need it. And we'll get the jewel case. And I'll set that over here and get it out of my way. Okay, there we got our car. And we have our body. And of course, I put the body on my little foam block to keep it well protected and out of the way. Okay, we'll take a look and see what we have. Of course, it's brand new. No lube, no anything. So I'm going to start by carefully removing the rear axle assembly very carefully. And I'll also go ahead and I'll remove the front axle. And for that, I normally just lift up the uh, wire runs that we have best I can. And I will go ahead and just pop the axle out and I'll just work it out through the wiring and uh, we'll get that out of here and we'll be good to go. Well, they can be a headache sometimes, that's for sure, because they have all this stuff wrapped up. Just be careful with your wiring. Make sure you're not going to uh, overstretch anything or uh, damage anything. And we'll do a little feed here. There, that's good. And this one here is good. So, And there we go. Front axle's out. Now the front axle is out of the car, the rear axle is out of the car. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the motor. And I will. I'll go ahead and disconnect it first. And just very carefully disconnect my motor. And then I'll use a flat blade screwdriver to slightly pop up. And the motor is out of the car. Okay, I'm going to set the motor off over here. I'm going to move the car out of the way over here, and I uh, want to talk a little bit about getting the motor broken in. Okay, the first thing we're going to address now that we have the car apart is we are going to address the motor. And a lot of people think that the reason why you brake or you uh, do your initial run on the car at a low speed is to help protect the motor from arcing or anything else like that. That's not exactly true. Um, no matter what, how you have it set, the voltage is the same, and the voltage is what creates your arcing issue. Uh, the only thing that's happening is the voltage is being turned on and off, on and off, on and off, uh, pulse width modulation uh, to control the speed of the car. Uh, again, we drive the car at a slow speed to prevent damage to the car itself in the event that it's uh, harder to drive than you would expect. So our goal is first is to break in the motor. And we're going to break the motor in at a slow speed. I've got my uh, power supply here set at 3.3 volts. However, I'm going to be using the 3.3 volt terminals uh, for the majority of the run. I'll just use this to help gauge uh, where it's at in the break-in process. And the reason why we need to do this break-in, basically in a nutshell, you have a round uh, commutator and the brushes when they're new are flat and we need to wear the brushes down to the point where they start matching the shape of the commutator. This will reduce the internal resistance of the motor uh, and it will uh, allow you know basically more current to flow into the motor making it more efficient and uh, run uh, much better and much faster. The break-in method that I use is uh, a little different from what uh, a lot of people may do. And again, the goal is to help protect the brushes from undue arcing. So by setting it at a slow speed, we can uh, reduce arcing. However, I'm going to run the motor in a bath of WD-40. And I'm going to power the motor up and I'm going to run the motor anywhere, I'd say between 12 and 24 hours. It depends on how everything is going, how long you end up running the motor. 
what you're going to find during the break-in process, the first thing I'll do is I'll write down my meter readings and take a look at them as soon as I start. What you're going to find is your current's going to increase as they begin to break in. And you'll also see the color of the WD-40 begin to change. How soon that happens, it's hard to tell. Uh, but it does make a good uh, way to break in motors. You've uh, all but eliminated any arcing potential. You eliminate any carbon buildup on the commutator. Everything remains lubricated. It, it's a very cool way to break in the motor, and it does a fantastic job. And usually we'll see a uh, significant increase in RPM potential out of the motors uh, following this break-in process because everything is uh, polished and uh, clean, and it does very well. So let's go ahead and get that set up. Normally I use a plug, but uh, my plug is broken, ironically. So I'm going to use just jumper clips. And one thing to remember is you got a gray wire and a purple wire on the stock Carrera. And purple is positive, or you can look at it as violet equals voltage. Doesn't matter. Your purple wires are positive. We do want to maintain our polarity, therefore our direction of rotation of the motor. As long as you hook up the positive lead to the purple side, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get these wires hooked up and we'll go ahead and proceed. Okay, I've got the motor hooked up with the red wire connected to the purple. And before I even turn it on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to just dunk the whole thing into WD-40. And then I'm going to take a pretty well beat up little clip here. And I'll just hook that on there in a manner that will kind of prevent the motor or the uh, gear on the motor from rubbing up against the glass. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it on. But what I'm going to do is instead of hooking it to the negative side on the 3.3 volt lead, I'm going to hook it up to the negative side of the meter. This will supply voltage from the 3.3, but will allow me to read the current draw on the uh, meter. So let's go ahead and get started and see what we have. Okay, so I'm starting out about, it started out about what? Let's say one, I'll call it one, 120. All right, I'm going to call that 120 milliamp. And that's red right here. The yellow is where I'm reading the uh, 0.120 milliamp. That will give us our current draw. And we can see we're on 3.3 volt on the green side. And I'm not going to worry about the 0.39 watt. I will write it down, but it's a calculated value. It doesn't really matter. We can see uh, we've got activity here in our uh, um, fluid. You can hear it. That's why we want to be careful, make sure we're not rubbing up against anything. And we will just let this go. And like I say, I'll start my timer now, but I usually let it run for about uh, 12 hours, 14 hours. Pay attention to your color of your WD-40, and you'll see that this will begin to darken up when we're actually... Um, removing brush material like we need to to shape them so this will begin to darken up in color a little bit and you'll notice an increase in your meter readings as we go so we'll let this go now I'll set my timer for 12 hours uh, we'll come back and check on it from time to time and see what we have and for right now I'm going to go ahead and put our terminal back on the negative just so I know I'm uh, consistent in my voltage output and we'll proceed and begin to do other things dealing with the wheels and the tires and things like that. Okay, I've moved the motor off to the side over here. You can see it's still running. I've got my car chassis over here ready to get busy with. But before I do that, I want to take a look at the body. And I want to run through the body real quick. I want to make sure that there's a couple things that are uh, good to go. One thing you'll notice a lot of these little side pieces that they are installed simply by melting 
a peg and uh, getting it into place. But if we feel, we can feel they kind of are a little loose. They kind of will make some noise as the body's going. So while that's in process and uh, everything else is moving, I'll take a little bit of time and I'll take some of my just clear plastic cement and I will very carefully, again, we don't want to damage anything, which is why the body is on a block. And I'll go through and just very carefully, very delicately, brush a little bit on those contact pins as I'm putting pressure. And this will help lock these little pieces into place and kind of stop them from rattling a little bit. One thing you want to be mindful of is you don't use too much because too much, uh, especially in the cockpit area, will tend to fog the uh, clear windows just from the vapors. So we do want to be careful. And I will go through and touch things like these little chin pieces. I'll touch those on the back just to help secure them a little bit better and make sure that they're not rattling. And I'll go through some of these uh, weld points here on the cockpit area itself. Again, just to make sure that everything is uh, secure and nothing's really going to go anywhere. And we're going to eliminate some body rattling by doing this right here without adding any significant weight whatsoever. Okay, and once that part of it's done, uh, one of these little spray bottles. I just have a, some of this turtle wax spray wax and I put them in these little pump bottles right here that I picked up on Amazon. The main reason why is uh, I get a really fine mist out of these bottles and it does uh, help it dry a little bit better. So I'm just going to give it a couple quick light little spritz. Again, I want to spray the inside of the body as well. That will help prevent some of the grease that you would normally use that normally gets slung on the inside of the body. It'll help reduce the, uh, how much that grease actually sticks to the inside of the body. And then I will take my nice soft rag, now that everything's glued in nice and solid, and I'll give it a quick wipe down just to make sure everything's really in good shape. Even though the car is brand new, we'll go ahead and get a coat of wax on it. This will make it easier to clean uh, in the future and makes life a whole lot better all the way around. So this is actually one of the more enjoyable aspects of doing this for the break-in and uh, makes it kind of nice. And this car is kind of important to me. Uh, I let my wife pick her favorite car out of this last batch. And uh, actually, this is not the car I expected her to pick, but uh, this is the car she chose. And so this one is actually uh, now going to be my wife's car, so uh, I got to make sure I do a good job with this one because, you know, it's my wife's car and I want it to be, uh, you know, perfect, right? So, okay, good. So that'll wrap up the body and uh, that's all we really need to do for the body. And I'm going to go on the inside and I'm going to wipe out just lightly some of the uh, residue or the leftover uh, wax that I sprayed on the inside of the body just a little bit and this will just help reduce some of the uh, grease from adhering so much to the inside of the body once we got the car complete and we're ready to go. Okay and that'll wrap up the body. That's pretty much it. I don't glue the mirrors. I don't glue the wing. The reason why is uh, depending on the situations where we're running I may want to remove these depending who's running who's not. So but for right now we're going to leave them on. So there's our body. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put my block back over out of the way so nothing gets spilled on the body. And that'll take care of that. And we will begin to proceed with what we have here for the chassis. Okay, we're back. And uh, we're about between five and a half and six hours on our motor break-in. And as you can see, our numbers have gone up. And right now we're about 130 and our uh, uh, wattage is between 4.2, 4.4, uh, 2.43. So we are showing a significant increase so far. 
in the uh, efficiency of the motor or the decrease in the resistance. I have yet to see any significant change in the color of the WD-40, uh, but that should be coming. So I'm thinking this is going to be a 12-hour break-in. It might even be a little bit less the way this is going. So we'll see how things go, and we'll just keep an eye on it and uh, see what we do. Okay, I uh, already recorded it once, but for some reason I didn't get the audio. I don't know why. But what I've done after that is, first thing I've done here, see if we can get in here and you can see, is right here where the wire uh, goes between the pin and the side of the chassis. And I've added just a drop of, uh, in this case, E6000, but shoe goo uh, would work just as well. But I've used some uh, E6000 with, uh, they come with, I got these specifically because they come with the lure lock cap and you can use these needles that come with it. Makes it a lot easier to provide a pre precise application of where you want it. And uh, hopefully you can see it, a little shiny bit. Like that's it right there a little shiny bit right there where i've uh kind of glued that wire to the chassis at the bottom and i've uh it's easy to remove if i need to remove the circuit it'll just tear right out but in this case it keeps it from hitting the axle and it'll prevent any uh, chafing or wearing uh, from the axle rubbing on the wire okay but what else i did i'm gonna move this out of the way you notice i took the tires off the axles and what I've done is I've filled the divots in the uh, stock Carrera wheels with uh, some gel type, gel type super glue. And I didn't have any accelerant, so I used my good old standby, which is nothing more than baking soda. And you just fill the divots with the uh, thick CA. I prefer using thick CA for this over the gel type, but again, that's what I had on hand, and it works fine. And uh, when you get done, you sprinkle your baking soda on there, and you want to let it sit for, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. And it's not as quick as the accelerant for the gel type. For thin CA, super glue is instantaneous, but the thicker your super glue gets, the longer it's going to take for it to cure, and it'll take maybe 45 minutes or so. But these will be as hard as a rock, and then I will take the wheels over to the tire razor, and we'll begin the process of getting the wheels trued, which is really important. So we'll come back uh, when this is set and we're ready to start truing our wheels. And in the meantime, we're going to keep our eye on what we have going on here and make sure we're getting a good solid break in. Okay, I've checked the progress on the motor. Motor's still doing what it needs to do. It's looking good. I'm starting to get a tiny bit of discoloration on the WD-40. And I have since moved the negative lead for the motor from the meter side negative down here to the negative for the 3.3 volt because I'm going to be using the meter now set to 7 volts to drive the tire razor. And I've got my rear axle chucked in place on the tire razor. And I'm going to go ahead and lubricate my uh, little drop of oil. And don't forget to oil your motor as well. But you want to make sure we keep the bushings oiled and make sure that they're in their proper place. We'll go ahead and fire up the tire razor. And like I said, I have it set at 7 volts. Okay, I've got two pads here. Uh, this is the one with the wheel buddy. This one here is uh, the sandpaper's in better shape. This one here... The regular one that comes with the tire razor is a little finer and it's a little uh, more worn. That's what we're going to use to knock down the plastic that we have here. And I'm going to go ahead and start screwing it down and you'll be able to hear when it's hitting if you just listen. There, there you hear that? That means we're just now touching the pad. Once we're touching the pad, we want to keep it moving. And then we can go ahead and tighten it up a little bit more and move it a few times. And we'll keep doing this all the way down until we get to start getting rid of the excess of the uh, super glue that we used to fill the divots. And uh, we start sanding into the rib of the tire. And we want to go to the rib of the tire is consistently sanded all the way around its perimeter. Okay, we're back. 
and after running the tire razor, it's very, very smooth. Um, all the divots are filled, everything's sanded. And if we look, I don't know if you can see it or not, but looking right down here, I can tell that the entire surface of the center rib has been sanded. That's telling me it's running as true and flat as possible. And that being said, if I fire it up and I put my finger on it, I can tell it's very, very smooth at this point. So I'll go ahead and I'll do the next wheel and we'll go from there and see what's next. Okay, we're back and I've run the wheels through the tire razor and you can feel they're very, very smooth and uh, we're ready to go. So the next thing I want to do is I want to dry fit one of the tires in place and make sure it fits correctly and does what I want. And in this case here, it's fine. Now, what we're going to do is I want to glue. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm going to want to glue the tires to the rims. So for that, what am I going to use? I'm just going to use simple clear nail polish. And the reason why I prefer to use the clear nail polish is A, it's removable. B, it does a good job. It, uh, it really does do a good job and it helps prevent uh, the tires from swelling and makes them easier to true later on. Now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some down on the center rib just like so. And then what's more important is we want to see if I can get it here and show you, but right there at the flange, right where the flange meets the rib, we want to go ahead and put a little bit right there as well. And uh, we want to be careful. We don't want to make sure we get it all over the front of the wheel. Um, the reason why is in order to take this stuff out to uh, remove the um, nail polish, you're going to have to use acetone. And acetone is also going to remove the paint off the front of the wheel. So you do want to be careful. And I'll go ahead and just put a little bit here on the uh, wheel flanges themselves. And this will do a good job of making sure the tires stay uh, in place and that we don't have any issue. So good, we've got that in. Now when I put the tire on, you notice we got the lettering on the front. I always push the tire on this way and I do it from the back and I'll roll the tire into place into the front and that will minimize how much of the excess we get onto the front of the tire. And I will just simply roll it at that point and make sure that we've got uh, good contact all the way around and everything feels pretty smooth. So it feels pretty good here. And looking at the backside, I don't see a whole lot of excess on the backside either. So good, I'm happy with that. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing with the other tire, the same process, use the um, clear nail polish to attach it. And then we will go ahead and uh, attach our tires and uh, we will let these set for an hour or so and let them dry. And then we'll be ready to start truing our tires. Okay. The uh, tires have had a chance to uh, dry. Um, where I've glued them to the rims with the clear nail polish. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start truing my tires. And if you just look at them pretty carefully and kind of feel them, you can definitely feel that the, uh, there's, it's kind of soft in the center. Um, seems to dip in a little bit into the center. The edges are raised. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start sanding the tires. And we're going to pay attention to the pattern that we get for the uh, uh, wear pattern on the sandpaper. And we're just gonna go and we're gonna sand them until they're cleaned up and everything's good. Once again, you wanna just make sure you do it until you get contact, keep your pad moving at all times. And when it starts getting a little bit uh, light, I guess, then you can go ahead and tighten it up a little bit more. And we'll just keep going this way. And we don't want to true too much. Our objective is to true the tire just until we uh, make sure we have enough to where the entire face of the tire is sanded. At that point, it's going to be about as round as you're going to get it. 
and any further sanding all you're doing is reducing the size of your tire maybe more than necessary so we're just going to pay attention to what we do and we're going to just go very slowly and do what we can to make sure we get a good sand and uh, I don't think I said this before but don't forget to wear your safety glasses when you're doing this it does fling out a fair amount of debris especially when you're um, after you fill the divots on the wheels with the super glue it does throw out a fair amount of debris so make sure that uh, you're wearing your eye protection okay we're going to take a look at the tire here and you can see the dark spots and the light spots the light spots is where we've been able to sand and the uh, darker spots here are areas that have yet to be hit with the paper this will give you an idea that uh, even though they feel round as you actually get into the meat and potatoes of this you'll find out that the tires are not nearly as round as you think they are this will show you and this is why we're doing this especially if you're going to go magnetless if you're running without magnets uh, the car will bounce all over the place if the tires are not trued so truing your tires is really the best thing that we can do to help the uh, performance of the vehicle straight out of the box okay as we keep going we can see that we're almost there we've got one little spot here that we still need to work with uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll continue sanding until the entire surface of the tire looks like this here okay so with a little bit more work what we've got now is the entire face of the tire is sanded now that that's done I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to it back up and I'm going to take my emery board and what I want to do is I want to chamfer just ever so slightly both faces of the tire the inside face and the outside face we want to eliminate the sharp corner um, as we slide out and we gather uh, traction onto the shoulder pieces we don't want these edges to hook up so by simply chamfering that corner ever so slightly that's really going to make a big difference in helping to prevent uh, the tire from hanging up on an edge and flipping over when we do the outside of the tires where the lettering are we do want to be careful and we do want to make sure that we're not going to sand away the lettering on the tire we just want to make sure we've got a nice uh, little chamfer on the outside and makes it nice and smooth all the way around and I'll check my tire it feels pretty good so at that point I'm going to take a little bit of water and a little bit of wet and dry paper fine and I'm going to just go over the tire itself and make sure I've got all the little nubs off and that everything's looking really good and it feels really good and you'll be able to find that this tire is going to run and this car is going to run a lot smoother when we do it this way okay I've got these tires nice and trued and I've got them uh, cleaned up pretty well too as a matter of fact and what I do next is uh, one thing that's important to me is I do not go for a specific tire diameter when I'm doing box stock but what I will do is when I'm sanding the tires I will sand them until they're trued and no more then I will measure the tires using my uh, micrometer here and or my calipers I should say and I will then sand the largest tire down to match the smaller tire and here in this case uh, I'm very very close on both sides it just worked out that way but I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, pulley off the axle now and I'm going to call that axle done so I'm going to spray it down with a little bit of uh, CRC plastic safe cleaner just get rid of any remaining residue and I'll let that dry and uh, that'll take care of the rear axle all nice and clean ready to go in the car and I'll Go ahead and I'm going to start uh, focusing my attention on the front axle and the methodology that I'm going to be doing with sanding the wheels and sanding the tires is going to be the same. One thing to keep in mind, especially with a stock Carrera car, is let's, let's face it, the cars have plastic wheels and the axles are not the hardest axles available. That being said, 
there is a chance that an axle is slightly bent. Um, sometimes touring the tires will accommodate for a slightly bent axle, but if it's bent a little bit too far, you're not going to be able to get to it. Likewise, the plastic wheels, they may be off center by a small amount. Touring them will help. The point I'm trying to make is if you can't get a wheel or tire into true, absolute true to where it's perfect, don't sweat it. I mean, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, we may not be able to achieve what we're looking for with plastic wheels and uh, uh, relatively soft axles compared to some of the competition axles. That's fine. Uh, it's still going to be a vast improvement over what you have. Uh, you're going to run into issues if you over true your tires trying to get them perfect. So just sand them down till we've got what we want, which is a smooth pattern all the way around. If you notice your tire size starts getting too small, like if you're actually starting to sand into the lettering on the tire, you know you're going too far at that point, and it's best to just stop and uh, not over true. But uh, I've only had that happen with one car. Everything else usually comes in real nice and trues up real nice and easy. And uh, I haven't had any issue with any of the other ones. I've had problems with one, but that's probably a rarity. So I'll go ahead and get the front axle taken care of and get the tires glued on and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll come back here in a few hours and we'll see where our motor's at. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a look at it now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my voltage back down to 3.3 volts. Come on. 20 and 30. Okay, there's 3.3 volts. And I'm going to disconnect the tire razor and I'm going to connect the negative from the motor lead and we're going to see where we're at. Remember we started out at 0.120. All right now we're 1.28. Uh, it went up to 1.29 at one point. We're at 0.41 watt. So I expect to see we're going to have a good, uh, a pretty decent motor uh, by the time these uh, 12 hours are up. Uh, we may go 12, may go 14, not sure yet. We'll just keep an eye on it and uh, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, we're back and uh, we've just hit our 12 hour mark and this motor's been running continuously for 12 hours. And we can see we're about 131, 130 right now and bouncing between 42 and 43 uh, for our wattage. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call that good. So. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull the motor out, and of course I'm going to stop the motor, pull it out, and I want to leave my wires connected, and I'm going to blow the motor out, and uh, just make sure everything is good at this point. And once I do that, I'm immediately going to dunk it into a uh, little cup I have here of the CRC Plastic Safe QD Electronic Cleaner. I'm going to dump it right in there. Let it sit for a minute and let it get all bubbled in. And I'm going to go ahead and run the motor again. And this time I'm going to run it for an additional uh, four minutes. You can see our color change that we have in our uh, WD-40 now. Okay, we have let the motor run for a good uh, four minutes or so in the electronics cleaner. And now I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect my wiring. And I'm going to let it uh, drip dry real good. And what the electronics cleaner does, of course, it gets rid of all the WD-40 out of the system. And basically what we're left with is a really polished motor. Um, the brushes are broken in. They're broken in very cleanly. There's uh, no carbon buildup, and uh, you can even look inside, and you can see the windings and everything just look phenomenal on the inside. And that's pretty much what we're after. So we're going to let this motor uh, dry a little bit more and uh, make sure we get everything out of it. Give it a couple quick blows. Make sure you get all the ex excess... Uh, electronics cleaner out of there and you'll notice this will take care of all the 
uh, excess crud that's left over inside the motor as well. Then uh, preemptively we're going to go ahead and put a couple drops of oil on the bearings and at this point I will do one extremely small dribble of oil right there on the back bearing as well. Uh, it's one of the few opportunities I do to uh, oil the back bearing. Give the motor a couple spins. I'll lubricate the front bearing again. A couple more spins. This motor is ready to go. So this motor is fully broken in. That being said, one thing I do like to do is I do like to purchase uh, a handful of these motors whenever I can and I will break them in ahead of time and it's a much shorter process to go ahead and uh, grab one of those pre-broken in motors into a new car and then I'll just break in the old motor when I have time. But in this case, I just said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way and show you the methods. Okay, we're back and we've got the car pretty much reassembled. Um, at this point, it's a simple matter of making sure you've got everything oiled properly the way you wish. And just a little drop each little location. Good. And I'll use some lighter weight oil on the pinion this time. One little drop there on the pinion. Good. We're good there. And then we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of grease. And we want to grease up our gears nicely. Make sure that's done. Not too much. A little bit of grease. Give a little spin. A little bit more. And I like using the grease out of the syringe. It really helps a lot. Good. Okay. So right now we've got the gears greased. We've got it lubed. It's uh, pretty much ready to go at this point. Uh, one thing I do want to do is... Where the front lights come around the screws, make sure they're tucked inside around the screw holes. That way you won't pinch the wiring when you install the body. Make sure that's good to go. And uh, I'll make sure my wiring is out of the way. And uh, we'll just go ahead and reinstall the body at that point. This car is ready to go. And uh, when you install your body, of course, make sure your screws go in cleanly. If they don't feel like they're going in correctly, back them out and screw them in again and we don't want to go too terribly tight on the body screws uh, leave them a little bit loose not enough that they fall out of course but just give just a hint of body float you'll find that helps out considerably and that's a good feel there we'll put our front screws in and there we go and uh once we've got that, one thing I did do, I didn't get it on video of course, is I made sure that the front guide is sitting properly, it's recessed properly, our braids are, uh, they should be clean, but I make sure they're clean and make sure they're frayed out just a little bit. And there we go. To top it off, I'll go ahead and give it one more shot of the uh, wax and wipe it down just to make sure it's good and clean. And the car will be ready to go back in its jewel case after this. Usually I uh, clean the jewel case real good. I also wax the uh, plastic blue base of the jewel case just to prevent anything from sticking to it. And the uh, uh, clear outer portion, when you remove the decals, sometimes you'll find that it'll leave some residue. Just go ahead and uh, spray some WD-40 on the residue area and let it sit for a couple minutes and it should just wipe right off if you have any glue residue and it'll do so without scratching the uh, um, case itself follow it up with a coat of wax and you're good so okay I'm going to take this car over to the track now and we want to see what we have make sure it runs correctly and we'll see how it feels okay we're here at the control unit I've got the car set up already ready to go um, I've got the control unit on wow and you can tell just by running it, it feels a whole lot smoother. A lot of that has to do with the chewing of the wheels and the tires. But a lot of it also has to do with the break-in of the motor. And I can tell this car is uh, quite a bit faster than it was when I initially, um, when I initially ran it. It's got a lot more just oomph and activity. 
And the best part about it is uh, I ran the numbers based on what I had for my current draw on the motor. And I actually got about a 10% increase in motor efficiency, uh, which translates, I'm assuming, just a theoretical 20,000 RPM at 12 volts. That's another 2,000 RPM, about thereabouts. So that's about what I'm looking at here. And you can really feel the difference in the motor. It pulls stronger, it pulls faster. Even at slower speed settings, the car feels stronger and faster. And that I attribute strictly to nothing more than the break-in of the motor. So I know it's a timely process, but I highly recommend breaking in the motors. It does a fantastic job, and you can really feel the difference in how the car runs. Okay, we're going to wrap this episode up. I know it's been a long one, but if you guys have any questions or comments, please just let me know. Uh, and I promise I'm not going to be a stranger. Uh, I'm going to be getting back into this and doing more things. One of these things here will be going through what I'm doing with the pit buildings here and getting those lined up. So that will probably be the next video series. So uh, for now, just uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe. And uh, as always, take care. And we will see you soon.